Now that we have player movement, jumping, and the lily pads, let's add a camera to the game. So I'm going to press 7 on the numpad and select the character by going cursor to selected. Then I'm going to add a camera. So the camera is just facing straight down right now. Now that we have camera, press 0, and then G and Z twice, drag up. So there are many ways we can implement the camera. You could do a first person game, third person game, a top down game. For this style of game, I'm going to be doing top down but it is going to be a follow camera. Instead of just doing a solid parent, if I select the camera and then select the player, I can press Control P and I can parent with keep transform to the player. So when I press play, you can see the camera just follows the player. This is the simplest version of adding a camera and the version that you would probably use if you're doing a first person game. You can see that it kind of works, easy enough to control. I'm actually going to set my camera to the angle that I want and then move it to where my player is like so. So now when we press play, we got this, we can move around. We're not going to use this method on this project because it's not going to work with this game because we got multiple corners. Let's just Alt P. So with the camera selected, we're going to clear parent and keep transform. So now the player moves around again and we're going to adjust the focal length. So we can switch our lens unit from millimeters to field of view. And right now we're at 39 and I kind of want this to be at 60. So it's going to be a little bit wider. Now I'm going to select the player and I'm going to add in a new empty. So this is going to be basically the follow point for our player. So I'm going to parent my camera to this new empty. Then let's rename this empty and call it camera follow. Now to make it easier to find all of our stuff, select anything that is connected to the player, press M, new collection, and we'll call this the player. So this will be our player collection. That way it is separate from our level, easy to select. So with the player selected, we can start doing more stuff. We'll go to our logic node window. And what we want to do is make a new script, call this camera script. And we're going to apply it to this empty. So apply to selected. And what I want to do is say on update, I want this to set position. For every frame, I'm going to set the world position. Now let's get world position so and connect that into the value then what we'll do is select the player cube in fact let's just rename this cube to player so we know what it is <laughs> there we go and we want to set the position of ourself so our empty is going to set the position of itself to the player so now when we play the game we did the exact same thing as parenting it to the parenting the camera to the player this will give us more options though so another thing we can do is we can add in a slow follow. So let's just disconnect this set position for now and attach this here. So on update, I want the object, so self and the target to be the player. Now if we press play, you can see we have a little bit of a slow follow, a little bit of a lead time. That way it's not so harsh. And you can adjust this factor so we can set it to 50%. And the higher this is, the more it's just going to be like the original parent. So let's go point zero two. That's going to be really slow. There we go. Let's just do point one. That should be good enough. That way it's not too extreme. So let's delete these since we don't need them anymore. We're just going to use the slow follow. Now let's add a raycast. And we'll say on update. And we'll get world position again the world position and set it to the aim. Now that we have the node set up, we're going to select the camera and we're going to add in a new empty, plane axis empty, and we're going to call this camera top. So now we're going to select the origin for our raycast. So select camera follow and we want the aim of the raycast to be our camera top. Now parent camera top to the camera follow. So now that we have those parented, wherever this goes, all of this is connected. To visualize the raycast, we can hit visualize, and if we press P, we can see the red line, and when that red line touches an object in the scene, you can see it turns green, indicating that we've hit an object. Now let's grab a set position, so we'll set the world position, then connect the has result to the condition. We're going to be setting the position of our camera to a point that is in between these two empties. So we'll select our camera, so typing in camera, select camera, 
For the value, so the set location value, we're going to use picked point. If you've seen some of my other videos, especially the third person camera controller, this is basically the same method. So now we can also hit advanced on our Raycast. This will give us a few more options. The only things we want the Raycast to interact with are going to be our non-metallic objects. So that's gonna be the ground and the trees. If we go into our camera and press play, and we walk under this ledge, you'll see that the camera goes right up against our player. But if we walk out from under the ledge, the camera does not go back to its original origin. So what we need to do is duplicate the set position node and we'll grab a knot. So now that we have this knot, we're gonna connect the has result. So if we don't have a result, we want to set the camera's position back to the original location. Let's just duplicate another one of these get position nodes and connect that in there. And we'll just leave it as camera top because that will be our camera's original location. If we press play now and we go underneath the ledge, the camera goes up to the player. And then when we go out from under the ledge, the camera's back at the original location. This is almost what we want, but we still have a few issues. If we go onto the lily pads and we go underneath the bridge, you can see that the camera is still a little bit too close to the player. So what we'll do is go search, set, FOV, and we'll set the FOV of the camera. Bring this underneath here, and we'll say camera. We'll just grab our camera, our current camera, and we'll set the FOV to 120. So if we have result, we will set it to 120. So if we press play, and we go underneath, you'll see that we have a much larger field of view. But the issue is if we go out from under, we still have a very large field of view. We want this to go back to the original FOV, which is 65. So duplicate this FOV, bring it to the top, and we'll say if not, so we'll just put it above this set position node. So if not, we want it to be 65. We're at 65, we go underneath the ledge, 120, and then it's back to normal. There we go. That'll give us a little bit more visual room, especially going behind tight spots like this. Then we can jump across the lily pad. And when we go under here, we got a lot more room. Now there's a few things we can work on. As you can see, we get a bunch of kind of weirdness here. And that has to do with the collision box on that tree since it doesn't have collision bounds. And we can fix that later. All right, so that's going to conclude the camera logic for now. 